the topic of the talk today is Web3 platforms. So when you start to think about blockchain technology, we think about cr crypto sort of off to the left here as a construct that runs on top of blockchain technologies. Then you have other vectors like consumer products, which is what we do at Humble, taking those decentralized rail systems and packaging them up for customers. So topic of the talk today, I'm, I'm the CEO of Humble. Um, on any given day, we're one of the most follow blockchain stocks in the world, which uh, when your stock is down sucks, but when it's up, it's good. So it's, uh, it's a roller coaster for sure. Um, but what we are, what we are building um, is a consumer platform rail that sits on top of decentralized blockchain. And that's, that's the charter that we all need to be thinking about is as we move from web two to web three to web five, how do you take consumer product lines that need to function as businesses, um, driving profits, revenues, um, supporting customers in a way that gives them an intuitive step forward into Web3, um, while at the same time decentralizing those services and maintaining privacy loads um, and all the good attributes of Web3 that we need to get out to customers. Um, so <clears throat> a couple of things that I would say for you all to keep an eye on are platform trends. So as we look at Web3, the platform trends that we anticipate uh, at Humble, our uh, search will be privacy driven. Um, it all starts with the wallet. So wallets will drive, pay, store, and send. Um, largely tokenized assets, we believe. Uh, websites will be token gated. So start to view NFTs, not just as sports collectibles or things like that, but also your token for access to brand experiences, um, richer levels of authenticity certificates uh, that come with the purchase of goods that can then be tracked or traded uh, on a peer-to-peer -peer level within marketplaces. Um, metaverse stores, we've been one of the first in the world to start um, building very rich brands that are standalone environments, um, which we did recently for a Major League Baseball player. So this isn't going in on top of um, Decentraland or Roblox, but rather stepping into a more premium environment where uh, the individual owns their Web3 environment for their brands and their endorsements. Um, and then lastly, we see ads being incentivized by tokenization. Um, I'm proudly the founder of, co-founder of um, the first legally registered DAO here in the United States out of Wyoming called Blocks, B-L-O-C-K-S. Again, fully decentralized, that's thousands of people running a community um, and, and driving forward a construct for decentralization in the United States. So very proud to be a part of that. Um, and it's important that your, um, your blockchain or your tokens that are uh, attributed to any kind of consumer product are uh, deeply separated from um, some of the profit motives of the consumer uh, side of the business. So again, I, I think I'm a living uh, testimony in a way to this sort of gnashing environment that we're in where you have a consumer products company like Humble that is for profit, and then you have a decentralized blockchain rail system uh, like Blocks or Ethereum or Bitcoin that needs packaging as well for consumers, but that can, cannot be um, um, monetized in a way that should sit within a, a profit motive or a corporation. So it's an extremely interesting time that we sit in. It's really important that we get the regulatory right so we can get down to the work. In terms of Humble, we have the digital wallet product. For us, that's, that's stop number one on the train is, is the wallet. Um, we've got the search engine platform, marketplace, and metaverse stores. And so what you'll see Humble doing here in the next um, several quarters is starting to contemplate how we get people into a platform view that still allows them to have privacy, um, that incentivizes them to um, consume advertising or buy products uh, by using decentralized technologies like Ethereum or Blocks. Bless you. Um, so here is our platform stack. Again, I'm really um, excited to wake up every day and think about how we can build Web3 together in a way where you see you know, some of these conversations between an Elon Musk or a Jack Dorsey, and they're saying, you know, should Twitter even be a company? Um, is it something where you're simply authenticating messaging and payments and verification on a way, on a, on a decentralized blockchain system that isn't necessarily designed for profit if you're truly empowering customers with the Web3 um, tool sets that we should be offering? Um, so what we've done at Humble is tried to really sensibly construct uh, what a consumer products company platform can look like 
um, where you're still driving value for the customer, you're still driving revenues for the business, but quickly routing them out into the tool sets that they deserve to start using Web3. Um, so here I believe we have a very thoughtful uh, technology stack that um, manages the convergence between consumer products and platforms uh, and the autonomy that should come with Web3 uh, on top of decentralized rail systems uh, like an Ethereum or Blocks where you have incentivization layers, you have um, tokenization, um, all the attributes that you want from decentralized blockchain that can empower commerce but still sit inside a consumer products layer that people can start to understand and start to use uh, just simply because Web3 has been so obtuse so, so far. So I thought I'd walk you through a case study that we recently did um, over the last two weeks. Um, I believe it's one of the most um, sort of thoughtful programs that's been rolled out so far in Web3 uh, by a public company. Um, so on the right, you have a seller. So let's take Cabrian Hayes, for example, who's an endorsement partner of ours, um, highest paid baseball player in Pittsburgh Pirates history. He is a brand. He's got Wilson. He's got Franklin. He's got Old Hickory. Um, he needs to move product for his brand partners. Um, and he himself is a, is a nine-figure personal brand. So how do you take a seller like that and get him off of eBay, get him off of Craigslist, no offense to those marketplaces, but really thoughtfully start to own your window into Web3 as a monetizer. Um, so we created an environment for Kibrian to start venturing into Web3 with his fans, his consumers, his base, um, leveraging some decentralized uh, technologies like blocks where he can now verify his NFTs, um, catalog his merchandise on an ongoing tamper-proof registry, uh, and so on, and build these wallet-to-wallet -wallet connections that uh, we anticipate personal brands will want, as well as corporate brands will want, uh, going forward into Web3. So really, really proud of this program. And I thought, you know, so sometimes these conferences can be so forward-looking and obtuse. I thought I'd just walk you quickly through a case study of what's happening uh, in real time here at Humble. <clears throat> and in fact, sorry, I want to go back to one piece of the education on this that's important, but can't get back to it. Um, so you'll, you'll note as well, guys, that the customer is driven down um, through, through a couple of different vectors that are, I think, really important for us to think about. Um, so what Web3 also contemplates is drilling people down not only into the terrestrial world, but then in the metaverse. And this is a really important piece because as you start to think about digital twins and parallel economies, um, how do we package those for people so that the metaverse becomes much less obtuse a construct and something that brands and individuals can start to leverage for each other in immersive environments. So <clears throat> as you look at the Humble platform, you have sort of the, the, the search piece, but then as we drill down into search, in Web 2, that was largely uh, phone book style line listings of merchants or um, click, click throughs to different um, types of websites. So we still contemplate that in Web 3, where you drill people down out to brick and mortar, um, e-coms, delivery. But then as you start to go north into Web3, you have web commerce pages that become more tokenized or token gated, meaning buy a Nike shoe, get access to a Nike environment. And that quickly begets the need to step folks into dedicated metaverse environments. Um, so what we see is, yeah, brick and mortar becomes more fewer, bigger, better experiences. Um, when the future consumer gets out of their caving mode, and decides to step outside, they want an experience that's rich and full. So you have these physical environments that will then also need digital twins in the metaverse, and that's what we built for Ricky Brian, as well as the token-gated access pages that come with NFTs. <clears throat> so it looks like I only have a few minutes left, but I wanted to walk you through here sort of what the, the um, tokenized landing page looks like. You then walk into an NFT collection or NFT garden that has the verified by blocks cataloged into a registry, really important. Still lots of fraud and forgery in NFTs. Um, <clears throat> you then step into the metaverse environment. Um, so we built a dedicated metaverse store for Cabrian and his partners. Um, you'll see here we had a, a Franklin environment where you can actually physically walk up to batting gloves and start to um, consume what he wears on the field. Um, you have the NFT garden where you can walk around the amphitheater and start to collect NFTs. We built an announcement environment for him as well where you start to contemplate instead of some physical press conference just with a couple of reporters, 
um, can you land and expand your audience much more broadly globally in the metaverse? So getting a lot of excitement from athletes and brands on this environment as well. Um, and then certainly we have this authenticated merchandise environment, uh, much more rich than uh, maybe a Web2 marketplace where it's not as verified or tracked by blockchain. <clears throat> so here you have the registry, you start to contemplate, I got an NFT when I purchased that good, it's cataloged in a registry, so if I ever need to do peer trading again on the humble marketplace, uh, you know what you own and so does the buyer. So in summary, the presentation I provided today, which I hope I can leave you with is, how do we contemplate consumer products and corporations, which have to be a thing, um, on top of decentralized rail systems, Bitcoin, Ethereum, blocks, et cetera, and marry those things into really exciting experiences for consumers and each other? Thank you. <laughs>